I've got no cool intro for you today. No funny cutaway to a 90s cult classic movie. No funny quips or interesting points to make about sales data. Today, I'm just tired. It seems like the popular thing on content platforms, both big and small, and across all of social media, is to just hate Magic the Gathering. And I don't get it. Listen, I have my problems with both the game and the company. They're well documented, over hundreds of YouTube videos. But I still love the game. I still love our community. And I think there's a lot left to love about the thing that we've engaged with for the better part of 30 years. So today, I want to push back against some of the community's largest and loudest complaints. And then I want to give you my unfiltered thoughts about Magic the Gathering, where it sits right now, and how I feel about all the change going on. And listen, this one's going to be a bit rough for me. I'm going to get probably a little bit angry and maybe a bit emotional. So I don't know if it's ever going to make the airwaves, but here we are and we're going to give it our best. All right, let's get into it. I think it's important to start a video like this by telling you to go ahead and look around the channel. You won't see any Wizards of this Coast sponsorships or anything being promoted by these game companies. I am just an independent creator. I've partnered with my favorite local game store, but as is always the case on this channel, I am free to say whatever I want when it comes to my feelings on any given game. They don't censor me in any way, and if they did, we wouldn't be a partnership. But when it comes to Magic the Gathering, it seems like people have taken it a bit too far. Content creators, both massive and small, have done nothing in recent history but bash Magic the Gathering and mention all the things that they don't like. It seems that the negativity is something that we constantly lean into, and yes, I have made videos about Magic the Gathering things and topics and events in the community that I don't like. In fact, I called the Commander Master's set booster box a bastardization of a product that used to be for everybody, and I called Magic 30th Anniversary Edition the most predatory thing I've seen in TCGs in some time. But it goes without saying that we never mention the good, and this has been documented by the fact that people say negative clickbait titles do better than positive ones, and that might be true, but I'll be honest with you, I'm getting a bit tired. So I want to take some time and I want to push back against some of the biggest complaints that we hear in our community. I want to talk about why this change might not be for you and I, but it's clearly working. And then I also want to give my unfiltered thoughts on Magic the Gathering because I think every once in a while it's nice to mental reset and just say out loud the things you're feeling about your favorite hobby. And I want to know if you're feeling those things too, if you enjoy or dislike Magic the way I do and everything you think about Magic the Gathering. But when it comes to major community complaints, with doubling season seeing a back-to-back -back reprint, it's time to start with what might be the most obvious one right out of the gate, and that's the reprint equity discussion. Now, this, this is something that I find extremely frustrating. Reprint equity and the idea of Magic the Gathering and Wizards of the Coast reprinting cards into the dirt is something that I struggle to get behind. In fact, I think we have actually seen a shift in Magic the Gathering design in the last couple years. It looks like Wizards of the Coast is no longer trying to make your arid mesas and marsh flats and even your doubling season the expensive variants or the expensive cards that people are looking to add to their decks. What they're doing instead is they are trying to make affordable versions of those cards and then make expensive chase and collectible versions for those who want to chase them down. Look no further than the Brothers War, a recent set that reprinted many artifacts. In fact, I think Mishra's Bauble was crazy expensive when I bought them for my modern decks. I think they were like 16 to $18 a piece and now they've come down much farther in price because you can get a normal version for just a couple bucks out of the Brothers War. But they've also done a good job of creating high value and collectible objects. And you guys know if you've been around the channel for a long time, if you haven't, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Like 80% of people who watch the videos aren't subs, so it helps out the channel a lot. But something I have been pivotal in talking about throughout the entire channel's history has been a big point of mine that I like to make no matter what trading card game I'm talking about is the player collector spectrum. We are all kind of existing in this ecosystem, in unity, in harmony, and a product and a game must, uh, must offer something for everyone every player, no matter where they find themselves on this player collector spectrum. And Magic the Gathering leans into that with things like serialized cards and confetti foiling and halo foiling and textured ultra portrait foiling and things of that nature. And because of this, regular versions of these cards for a product that is mass produced to be marketed to a community of anywhere between 20 to 50 million, depending on who you talk to and what day, are going to be a bit cheaper. And I actually think 
that's okay. We find a way to satisfy the condition of game pieces being cheaper. They should never be free. Like these things have to maintain some kind of value. It is an important aspect of how our game works, but they should get cheaper in some cases and have versions that are more expensive for those who like to engage with the game at that level. And as far as that goes, recent sets have been a pretty big win. Look at almost every set. There's tons of brand new playable cards that by the way, are not reprints and nobody talks about nobody gets and sits in front of a camera and screams into a lens about all the amazing new design that we are getting for pioneer modern and yes even commander brand new cards that are staples of formats heck at the time of the recording of this video wilds of eldraine is the most recent release and there's a five dollar uncommon in the set up the beanstalk because it is playable in everything it is such good design that it hurts when people just constantly bash new magic cards and all they want to talk about is reprints so again i think wizards of the coast is actually doing a pretty good job here and yes some of these decisions are quizzical do i think doubling season should be printed in back-to-back -back sets after commander masters released and suffered no but this leads us into our next point. The problem with the sets is not reprints. The problem with the sets is not that they're quality products. The problem with the sets isn't even that we don't like the cards. The biggest problem with Magic the Gathering sets as they exist today is all about price. Now, everyone will sit in front of a camera and they will say unto the internet ecosystem, I remember when Magic decks used or Magic boxes cost $100. And I remember when they cost this and they're charging $500 for this and $400 for this. and, this, and these are all fair criticisms. The only thing I'll push back against here is inflation happens. Magic the Gathering boxes can't cost $100 for infinity. The fact that a set booster box of, again, the most recent set at this time, Wilds of Eldraine, is $120 is not obscene to me. That seems like a completely fair price for a wonderful product that has a little bit of something for everybody, no matter how you play Magic the Gathering. The set booster box is a good product, but it does lead to some problems. The price increase has been mismanaged by both companies above the chain other than your local game store. What I mean by this is Wizards of the Coast and your local game store, or Wizards of the Coast and distribution upping the price of Magic product, and then your local game store being stuck holding the bag. That's the issue, and that's something to be to fairly have a problem with, and that is okay to say, and that's okay to be like, hey, this is not a great thing. But in fairness, the products that they are selling to the community are doing just that. They are selling in insane numbers. I collect almost all the sales data on TCG Player, and these products continue to be wildly successful. When compared against one another, the product sales just seem to keep going up, up, and up. And for this reason, we know it's not the design of the product, the price, or even the delivery method. It is the fact that there is no meat left on the bone, so to say, for our local game store. So just screaming into the ether that $400 collector boxes is wrong. Well, if it was wrong, we would not buy the product. However, we do. People continue to buy the product at these prices. And when the price is wrong, a la something like Commander Masters, not only is there notice throughout the community, but the initial problem we started this conversation on, the fact that the game store can't make any money, is multiplied. Because guess who is left holding the bag when we as a community tell Wizards of the Coast this product is in fact too expensive? Well, that would be your local game store. So the complaining about Magic the Gathering prices and the price of a box just seems unfounded to me. In fact, we are following up Commander Masters with Wilds of Eldraine, which is an amazingly affordable set. If you buy a set box of Wilds of Eldraine, you're gonna get a ton of cool cards, have an amazing experience, and be able to build some decks and jam cardboard on any kitchen table that you want. Like, it's a great experience, and it comes at you for a price of $120, and I bet if you bought it at your local game store, or went to minmaxgames.com or anything like that, you could probably get it for a bit cheaper. So I just don't like complaining about the price, but that doesn't mean that everything is just fine. Again, my big problem personally with the Magic the Gathering ecosystem is the fact that the place that we low and love and the place that we want to play Magic the Gathering is a place that we can't play Magic the Gathering because, well, 
the company that we support is not supporting them. The support is not going two ways, and that's a major miss to me. And I believe that happens because, listen, Wizards of the Coast is a massive entity. They're a huge company. And instead, they're not looking at the little companies that support their game and their local communities. They're looking at the bigger picture and the bottom line. And with that, things get lost in the fray. And I believe at this moment in time, the local game store is lost in the fray. I hope that they make a change to bring that back around. But when it comes to card design or the fact that boxes are too expensive and people won't buy them like that's clearly not the case again when people won't buy product we get something like magic 30th anniversary edition now to wizards of the coast credit and again this is a big theme of this video is like wizards of the coast is doing things well that we don't talk about again modern card design i'm just gonna hammer on modern card design it's incredible it's so good Think of recent sets. You can come up with iconic cards out of almost every single recent set that are seeing play across a parade of formats and people are excited to put in decks and put down on tables. And that is a massive win. Magic is not all reprints. It's more reprints than it's ever been, but give some credence and some credit to modern card design. I really do think Magic the Gathering deserves more credit when it comes to some of the stuff, and I think that our criticism needs to be better targeted. The fact that there's a new secret layer every week doesn't affect us in any way, but the fact that that secret layer is not th sold through the game store where the LGS can make a couple dollars, that's a problem. The fact that Wizards of the Coast prints products in mass is not a problem. We don't care. The fact that these standard sets live on shelves for a year, that's not a problem. It should be that way. Magic products should go up over time. This isn't an indie TCG, ladies and gentlemen. This is the largest trading card game in the universe. The problem is, however, when there is excess product, it seems like Wizards of the Coast flows that directly through Amazon to us at a price that's impossible to match for people that are trying to make a living building businesses around our game and our community. And this is coming from the perspective of a player. I don't own a business. I have a YouTube channel in my basement, not my mom's basement, in my basement, thank you very much. And I have no dog in the fight other than just I want to see a healthy ecosystem. Yes, I partner with a game store. Yes, I have friends who run game stores. But at the end of the day, that doesn't affect me at all, if I'm being completely honest. I just want to see a healthy ecosystem where we can continue to enjoy Magic the Gathering. But these problems, I think, are more the change of Magic the Gathering and how we engage with the game and how the product's delivered to us. And listen, the vocal minority that are on these content creator platforms and on social media platforms and anything like that, like, I think this makes us uncomfortable. Like, the set booster box I'll use as the final example before I sign off today is a massive change. Uh, I, I interacted with a commenter on the May the Zuby With You podcast, a podcast that I'm on that we do every Friday morning. We're talking about the set booster box, and it was a, a great point was made that it injects a ton more rares and a ton more mythics into the secondary market and changes how that market will act and will change how that market acts forever. And that's only a problem for people that remember the magic market as it was, right? When you pulled the mythic, you sold it, you had a bunch of rares that you could constantly sell and make your money back out of boxes. Like, listen, that has changed. That's not the case anymore. But looking at the number of people that buy set booster boxes and the number of people that continue to come back, release after release, who seem to love and enjoy the game at multiple levels, that might just be gone and it might be a change forever. Things are going to change. Things are going to have to be found out. I'm uncomfortable with it. It's not something I like personally, but I respect that it has changed and the massive amount of the community members that are not on this channel, that are not in this comment section right now, seem to enjoy it. So again, the magic negativity has been weighing me down a bit. I'm going to do my part to be more positive. And if you like this converse conversations about things that might be a bit uncomfortable, and if this ever does go out, then go ahead and share this video on one of those social media platforms. Any Facebook page, Discord group, where you think there's a lot of magic negativity going on, I would like to try to lend our community voice to it and say, hey, there's a lot bad going on, but there's also a lot good, and that good deserves to be acknowledged too. And Listen, I think there's a lot of wins in Magic this year. I think there's a lot of wins in Magic's future, and there, frankly, are some things I'm still worried about. And as you can know, and as you can bet, I will always call it as I see it. I'll give you my honest opinion on the game, the things I like, the things I don't like, no matter what partnerships I take or sponsorships that we undergo. 
I won't do it if I can't share my thoughts. So thank you again for hanging out. If you haven't yet, please click that subscribe button. We're racing to seven. I think we're 6250 or 6750, 6750 subs now. I can't believe we passed 6500. You, you guys are awesome. Smash that sub button. Share this video. Thank you so much for hanging out. Until next time, you all know me. My name is Josh, and we'll see you around. Goodbye.